morning, Year 3. Um, happy Friday. Well done for working so hard on all of your maths work this week. You've all uh, been doing fantastic, fantastically with all the addition and subtraction and things that we've been doing. So really, really well done. Now, I know I said yesterday that we would be doing um, finding 1, 10 and 100 less than numbers today. But I'm going to save that for Monday's home learning because today I thought it would be nice as you've all worked so hard to do some fun maths activities because it's actually maths week England which is a special week in schools where we think about how fun maths is and different ways that we can use maths okay so I've put together lots of activities um, now you don't have to do them all um, if you just have a look through and choose the ones that you want to do okay so please don't worry about completing them all okay then I'll just talk you through each one so you know what you've got to do okay so first of all we've got some different puzzles some different addition puzzles so on this one you've got to fill in the missing number to make the answer in each corner okay so for example 9 add 9 equals 18 and then 18 take away 7 equals 11 and then here you've got to think 4 add something equals 11. So this one is a missing number puzzle. So you might like to have a go at that one. Then we've got some addition pyramids. Now I know you did these um, earlier in the week in some of your home learning. So remember what you've got to do is add up the numbers at the bottom to make the brick at the top. And then as you get higher up you add the two numbers at the bottom together to make the brick at the top. Now on some of these, so for example on number nine, there's a missing one. So to work out what the missing one here is, okay, you could do a subtraction. subtraction. So you could do 39 take away 19 to get that missing number. Okay, so you might like to have a go at that one. The next one is a special crack the code one. So what you've got to do is work out the answer to the question. So for example, 10 add 3 equals 13. So you've got to find the number 13 in the code and then write the letter above it. So I would write the letter T there. Then I've got 40 add 5, which equals 45. And the letter U is above 45, so I'd write that here. And if you work through the questions and do the whole, the whole um, puzzle, then you will get, um, then you will crack the code and reveal a very special message. Okay, uh, you might like to once you've done it. You could design someone, uh, design another one for somebody else to complete. You might enjoy doing that. Okay, the next one is called emoji code breaking. So what you've got to do is look at the emoji symbol and then match it up to the number. So this one, the big green one, that's a five. This is the mouse, so it's three, so which makes the number 53. And then you've got this one, which is four, because it's the love heart emoji. And then the sad face, which is um, a one. So you've got 40, no, sorry, 53. Add 41. I think you said 53. Add 41. Okay. So now if, if you work through all of them, okay, and see what numbers you get, you could um, write it on a little bit of paper and do some column addition to help you to work out each of the answers. Okay. Um, you might again like to design one of these for somebody in your family to solve. So you could draw some different emojis on your paper and give them a different number and then draw some different addition questions that you could um, give to somebody to solve or to send to me and I can have a go. Okay, that would be lovely. Then we've got another addition puzzle. So this one is about a special number trick that you can do. And that is that if you have a number and you double it, you add 10, so you, you divide it by 2, and then you subtract the number you started with. The answer will always be 5. So what I want you to do is test it with these numbers here to check it's true. 
and then see if you can test it on somebody else in your family. Ask them to think of a number, tell them to double it, add 10, divide it by 2 and then take away the number they started with and I'm sure the answer they get will be 5. So you might be able to amaze people in your family with that trick. Okay, now we're going to move on to some multiplication or some times table games. Um, for all of these, if you don't have a printer, you can just copy the grids and things onto some paper. So don't worry about that. So this one, you've just got to roll a dice, and then the answer you get, you've got to times it by 2 or 3. So for example, if I rolled a dice and got a 4, and I would times it by 2 to make 8, I could then colour in the number 8 on the grid. And then the next player would have a go, they'd roll a dice, they might get a 2, and they might times it by 3, and they could colour in the 6. Okay, The winner will be the person who gets 3, um, three coloured squares in a row. Okay. Now the next one. This one's a little bit harder, okay? So if you want something a bit easier, I would choose this game. But if you want something a bit trickier, more of a challenge, so you've got to roll a dice, sorry, roll two dice, and then times your answers together. So on this example here, this dice, if you rolled a six and then a two, you'd do six times two, or two times six, and then you could colour in the square 18. And on this game, the first person to colour in Four in a row wins. Okay, so you might like to have a go at that one. Then we've got a snakes and ladders game. Okay, um, please don't worry about printing. You could just draw this out quickly onto some um, paper. Okay, there's some instructions here to help you with how to play it, but I'm sure you've all played snakes and ladders before, so you know what to do. Okay, then we've got a three times table game. So you've just got to roll the dice, move on however many you get. So if I got a three, I would be very unlucky and have to go back to the start. If I got a four, I'd have to say five times three. Okay. So you might like to have a go at that one. And then this is one on the two times table. So if you're still practicing your two times table, this might be one that you want to have a go at. Okay then. Oh, one last thing to multiplication, we've got, um, it's uh, a colour in mosaic, so you've got to work out the answer to the question, so 2 times 9 is 18, so I look which colour I need to colour 18 in and it's blue. If I found 11 times 5, that's 55, so I'd colour that square in yellow. Okay, and then once you've worked out all the answers and coloured it in, it should reveal an emoji. Okay. Again, you might like to design one of these for somebody in your family or your friend to complete. Okay, that might be quite nice. Right, right then. Then we've got um, this little game, and this might be something that you might like to do outdoors. Okay, so if you've got some chalks at home, you could make your own multiplication hopscotch in your garden, and then have a go at doing it. So when you land on each one, you have to say the answer to the times table. So this one would go 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, and so on. Or you could do a bit more of an obstacle course with different um, addition and subtraction questions, and then you've got to answer them as you go through. Okay, so 3, 16, 5, etc. Okay, if you haven't got chalks, don't worry, you could just use some paper and then write the questions on paper and lay them out in your house, like as a hop stop, uh, sorry, a hop scotch course. Okay, you might enjoy doing that. Brilliant. Now, finally, we've got some maths art ideas because maths isn't always just about numbers. Okay, you can do lots of cool art things with maths. So this one is called circle art. So what I want you to do first of all for this one is find something circular in your house. So maybe a glue stick or a cup or a some sellotape and then you've got to draw around it lots of times so that the circles are overlapping so you can see here there's lots of circles all overlapping each other and then choose some colours okay and you can colour in each section in different colours to create like a pretty pattern okay 
so you might enjoy doing that. Then we've got this one, and it's called a geometry star. Now it looks more complicated than it is. So if you go onto the next page, there's some instructions to help you. And I'll just quickly talk you through them now. So first of all, you've got to draw a line on a piece of paper and label one end A and the other end B. Okay. And then you've got to draw about 15 to 20 dots on the paper all the way around the line. Try not to draw any on the line because that will make it tricky. So just draw them all the way, all the way around the paper. And then with a ruler, you've got to go to each dot and draw a line back to A and then draw a line back to B. Okay, and then go all the way around the dots and do the same. So if I picked this dot here, I'll draw a line to A and a line to B. If I picked this dot up here, I'd draw a line to A and a line to B. And the idea is to do it for the, all of the dots on the page. Once you've done that, you should get something that looks a little bit like this. So a special star. And then you can use your colours to colour in each section of the star. Or you might like to do, like this person's done here, some patterns as well. Okay, so that might be one to try. Then we've got some maths line art. Okay, so what you've got to do for this one is using your ruler, draw lots of lines in different directions on the page okay and then colour in each section maybe with patterns maybe just in different colours I like this one here they've used different shades of red and pink and purple which looks really nice and all they've done is drawn different lines in different ways so different directions onto the, the page to create some different artwork okay Brilliant. Once you've done it, you can see which shapes you can spot inside your picture. So can you see any rectangles or squares or triangles? Okay. Brilliant. So there's lots of different activities there for you to try. So some addition puzzles, uh, some multiplication games, and then some art. So maybe you, could, you might like to pick one from each section. So a puzzle, uh, a times table game and then um, some of the maths art, okay? If you um, are struggling to play the games with the times tables, what you could do is just practice your times tables, maybe using hit the button or watching one of the YouTube videos to help you with your times tables. Okay, um, I would, as usual, I'd love to see what you get up to today, what activities you choose. So if you'd like to, if you've got time, you could uh, send a message to the year three email address that would be lovely. Okay, so enjoy your maths activities and I can't wait to hear about what you get up to.